Hey everybody, this is Steve again with another video uh, describing parts of my Honda S2000 electric supercharger. Uh, this video is on the 32S LTO battery. That's a very important part of it. The first part of this video, I'm going to talk about building the battery and kind of how it ties into the system. And then the second half is we're going to test it. And I'm going to show you, uh, really put it through the, um, through the torture test and we're going to see how well it works. So hang on to the end. Uh, here's the load over here. This guy will add about 100 horsepower to my Honda S2000. Uh, and to do that, I have to get about 15,000 watts, 80 volts at uh, close to 200 amps DC to this motor. This is 120 by 100 mill millimeter um, uh, RC hobby outrunner motor. It turns about 7,000 RPM. And uh, this battery is doing an excellent job uh, considering that I'm using these cells. And you look for a brand name and you will not find a brand name because these are advertised as generic 6 amp hour ADC prismatic LTO cells which I don't like the fact that there's not a brand name, the generic, but I took a chance and I built me a battery and uh, it works extremely well. I have, I have no problems with these cells. Uh, in fact, I, I ordered four of them initially to test them and I liked them. So I ordered um, 28 more to build out the complete battery pack. And the 28 they sent me were actually a different brand and the first four they sent me. One was blue, one was black. The terminals were slightly different, but just very, 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 very slightly different cosmetic differences. Uh, and there's no brand name on them, but they were clearly made different places. I tested them, and you cannot tell the difference between the four I bought late, uh, earlier from the 28 I bought later. They match perfectly, even though I don't, I think they're made by different companies. I assume you can't really tell. And then I damaged a cell. I inadvertently poked a hole in this one. So I bought three more cells. And believe it or not, they were a third manufacturer. They looked different than the other two. But luckily, it matches pretty well electrically. This one is slightly different. You can tell a difference. It tends to run a 50 millivolts lower than the other ones. But I think that uh, the BMS balance takes care of it. And uh, I may try to talk to place about the battery, Srico, and see if I can't get one of the other ones. But uh, it's a minor problem. It does it, it impacts the battery very, very slightly. And I've got a I've got a BMS over here. This is a Enoid 32S X Lite BMS, and it works very, very well. And um, I had some issues initially, but they're my fault. I can't blame the uh, the BMS and the the guy that, uh, that I've been talking to there, he's, he's from Canada, has been extremely helpful. Um, there's not much documentation on it, which is the one downside. However, he has been extremely helpful, a very sharp guy, and he's helped me work through my issues with it. So it, everything's working good. It balances. It charges. Here's the battery charger. This is a 12-volt. This is going in my car, so I'm going to charge it from the 12-volt car system. This is a 12-volt to... 85 volt up converter. Uh, you can buy these off of Amazon for about 25 bucks and they work really, really well, surprisingly well. So, um, this just it goes in my car, whatever the engine's running, you put 12 volts here and it charges the battery. So, it's, it's always charging. I added uh, another fan to it. I think one very important thing to know about this battery charger is that there is a mistake in this battery charger. They had three 20 amp fuses right here. And these are those real small format fuses trying to protect you against pretty high currents. And when I first hooked this thing up to a power supply that can supply some serious current, this is a 50 amp 12 volt. Uh, it turns out the current limit wasn't hooked up correctly. It was my fault. Um, and this thing took all 50 amps or whatever that supply can and these three 20 amp fuses in parallel went into um, plasma arcing, I think they call it. Instead of blowing, they just maintain a plasma arc. And I looked over and they were on fire. 
I had flames coming about this high up off this thing. Those fuses completely failed to protect this thing. And the reason why is apparently you were not supposed to put three small fuses in parallel to protect against a large current. So I've bypassed those fuses. This is important if anybody's using this thing. Um, and I put in a large format fuse here. This is a much larger fuse. I think this is a uh, 45 amp fuse. And it's, it's, a, it's a much bigger fuse that's, that's designed to handle the kind of currents that these little guys apparently really can't handle. And then to make sure, uh, this, this goop right here, I put a thermistor down there and I send the temperature of this battery charger back through these two wires right here, back to, to these two wires, and I monitor the temperature in the super controller, and I can turn off the battery charger through this switch. This is a P-channel, three P-channel fits in here in parallel that this guy can turn off to, um, if I see anything hot happening, I can turn this guy off. So I think I've, I've taken care of that problem. The first thing was to fix the current limit problem, and, and I had the uh, negative 12 volts shorted to the negative battery, thinking I wanted to ground this battery to the chassis of the car. Well, you can't do that, because that shorts out the current sense resistor here, and it shorts out the current sense resistor in the BMS, and neither one of them will, this guy won't charge, and this guy won't current limit if you do that. I found that out the hard way. I got a 300 amp fuse on the output. I'm pulling about 200 amps from it. And um, these batteries are rated at six amp hours. And we're going to test it here in a few minutes. I haven't done this formally, but I think they will do close to six amp hours at, with 150 amps going through them. And they have very low output resistance. And running them at 150 amps for several minutes at a time, they don't get the slightest bit warm. I am very, very impressed with, with these batteries. The way it's put together is to go in the trunk of my car and with the cover on it, it will be, these have been a recessed area of the trunk and it will be flat with the bottom of the trunk. They're going to be recessed. But since the battery is going to be shaken and bounced around, I was a little worried about these solid bus bars. If these cells try to move, then you could crack a terminal. So I've tried to get it mechanically very solid. It's sitting on a quarter inch sheet of aluminum sandwiched down to another piece of 3 8 inch of aluminum and these are all tied together so hopefully this bottom is very very stiff um, I got the batteries compressed together quarter inch piece of aluminum each end some all thread going down the sides the ends in the middle and I've got them lightly pulled together uh, they're, they're pulled together just tight enough to where you can pick up the uh, 32 batteries not on this piece of aluminum and they won't slide around but uh, they're not cranked down very tight at all just enough to where they they won't move relative to each other the bus bars I made myself and I'll show you a little bit about that later I took some copper pipe uh, from Home Depot flattened it drilled it and I tin plated them myself so I usually leave this piece of plastic over the battery just to kind of protect it a little bit protect me and then to complete the mechanical assembly, this piece goes on. Uh, two nuts go here. And this clamps the uh, entire battery down hard to the aluminum plate, trying very hard to make sure these cells cannot move among each other. And then uh, here's the uh, cover. Air inlet right there by the fan. Okay, and um, this this top of this box lines up at the bottom of my trunk. This is recessed into the into the bottom of the car, and uh, some ventilation holes on the side. It doesn't get hot in there at all. I, I uh, we've got temperature sensors on the battery and on the battery charger, and I've never seen any kind of a significant temperature rise in it. This is a screenshot from the uh, BMS. The BMS operates through the VESC app. So you, you download the VESC app and then it'll connect to the BMS through your cell phone. And uh, this screen is showing that the, the minimum voltage battery is 253, the max is 2552. 
the 0.022 volt difference and is charging at 3.34 amps. The graph at the top showing all 32 cell voltages just isn't showing much because it's really set up for uh, a LiPo voltages and so I'm at 2 point something volts it, it hardly even shows up on the left hand side. This uh, connection right here, this cable right here from the battery and it goes 13 feet through the power cables uh, over to here and here it's going into the Arduino controller, my super controller and then from there it goes over to the VSB controller so this is a CAN bus with three things on it and uh, this is very important because um, th this is what allows me to protect my battery really really well being a charge only BMS it cannot disconnect the battery from the load itself um, very high current for one reason, but the other is you really want the speed controller, the load to do it. Because instead of just switching it off suddenly, which can create issues, the uh, speed controller will know what the lowest cell voltage the battery is, call that V-cell min, and because this, the, uh, the CAN it receives that information over the CAN bus from the BMS, and then it's supposed to gradually reduce the load on the battery and, and turn the load off, uh, based on the lowest cell voltage. That's by far the best way to do that. Um, if you try to look at the entire battery voltage, if you've got one cell that's low, then when it gets down close to minimum, even though the whole battery may be okay, if it's struggling, then that cell will crash down to a very low voltage and damage that cell before you can even tell by looking at the total cell voltage. So it looks at the minimum cell voltage. And then for charging, you want to look at the biggest cell voltage so you don't overcharge it. That can be handled here by the speak by the uh, BMS right here. But V-cell men, you really want to send that information uh, at least with a high-powered speed controller over here. Now, the problem with it is that that didn't work for me because the VES speed controller apparently does not like the LTO battery voltages. Um, it just, it, anytime it sees 2.5 volts on the battery, it shuts everything down. I think it's really thinking about LiPo batteries. So what I did was I had to add my Arduino controller. This is what tells controls the speed controller. So I added it to the CAN bus. So now this guy knows V-cell men. And when it sees V-cell men get down to a certain limit, it will start telling the speed controller to start backing off. And then finally it will shut it completely off. That all works great, and I it's a, a very, very clean setup uh, to the whole system. This shows the, uh, the copper I use for the bus bars. I hammered them flat. I used a kind of a solid metal anvil. It helps to get it nice and smooth. And I cut them into fixed length pieces, stuck them in my CNC uh, router to precisely drill the holes, separated them and then uh, tin plated them myself. I used uh, salt water for the electrolyte and I uh, used some plumber's solder, pure tin, no, uh, no rosin or acid core, just pure tin uh, plumber solder. And uh, they, they uh, plated up very, very easily. Here's some thin plastic uh, PET that I, I cut this stuff and used it between all the cells and the bottom and the top of the battery and the sides of the battery just to give it a bit more insulation than just the uh, heat shield. Now, this batteries could be in the trunk of the car, and uh, the supercharger is about 13 feet away, so we got to get a cable between them. The, uh, the speed controller has three XT90 connectors coming into it, so you can the current kind of divides fairly evenly into each one of these three. So on the battery, I did the same thing. I did three outputs. These are all in parallel, one, two, three. This one, this one, and this one. So now all I gotta do is just build extension cords. So um, each one of these cords ties one of these XT90s to one of these XT90s, and there's three of them. So um, I wanted low resistance and low inductance in these guys. So the way they're built, each, each one of these wires each one of these cables here contains two 10 gauge silicone insulated wires and surrounding them are 
Surrounding each one of those 10 gauge wires are 10 20 gauge magnet wires. Uh, 10, 10 uh, 20 gauge wires has the same resistance as one 10 gauge. So you ask, why did I just not use a 10 gauge return wire instead of the 10 magnet wires? And that is for inductance. Trying to get the mutual inductance very, very low. And the way I'm doing that is by getting the return current as close as possible to the forward current. And that lowers the inductance. Um, I'll, I'll, show you, I'll show you a picture of the inside of this cable in a minute. So uh, the bottom line is that with these three cables, I've got six 10 gauge wires. Each one of them is wrapped in 10 20 gauge wires. And each one kind of looks like a piece of coax, which gives you a low characteristic impedance or, or low inductance. And uh, it turns out that uh, surprisingly enough, even though there's 13 feet here, I tested this guy with no additional capacitance here and it worked fine. Although I did over here, there is there is some additional capacitance I added. Um, I found out what kind of capacitors were used in the speed controller, and I bought the same ones. And there's six inside the speed controller. I bought a pack of ten, so I got ten more over here to help decouple the inductance of this cable. But it's not really needed. And um, there's about a one volt drop between here and here over that 13 feet. So this cable doesn't really do too much to the performance. Um, in fact, I actually plugged it in the first time straight from the battery to the speed controller and you really can't tell you really can't tell much difference in the performance whether the cable is there or not. And this cable is going to run under the car. Um, there's a little chase way that Honda has there that where a lot of stuff goes. It's just attached to that. And it's uh, it's waterproof. I got protective heat shrink, and it's waterproof, so it should be pretty durable. I ran some tests on the battery. I discharged it, and uh, this is kind of what it looked like in terms of its discharge characteristics. Okay, this is the setup for the big battery test, the BBT that I, I ran. I hooked the supercharger up, I put a one and a quarter inch orifice on the output, and I cranked the boost up to about five and a half uh, pounds of boost by setting the duty cycle to 75%. And that is roughly about uh, full throttle at around 6,000 RPM, which is probably running, engine is probably running 240 horsepower, so it's not like about two thirds power. And the, the uh, motor was taken uh, about 130 amps initially and it dropped down to about a hundred as the speed controller started slowing it down Because uh, the speed controller motor was starting to get hot, but it ran for almost two minutes before it started started getting hot So when the motor and the speed controller got hot, they didn't get that hot actually, I could have let them get hotter. But um, they ran about two minutes, then I let them cool off for a while, I restarted it, and um, I discharged this battery down all the way to about 2.15 volts per cell loaded, and which is probably more than I should have. But they were still holding in right there, and I measured the capacity right at 6 amp hours, which is the rated uh, capacity. This is about a 2025 20, C test. The batteries are rated at 60 C, and uh, the best I can tell, they could probably do it. Uh, I've I've run these guys as high as 200 amps, and, and just haven't measured them too much, but they, uh, they they look real good at 200 amps. So overall, I think the I feel real good about this battery, and um, I should be able to get you know at least two minutes, depending on how hard I run it, of um, of uh, supercharger blower action before it needs to be recharged. So uh, that ends this video and uh, we'll talk to you later.